Uh, this is what I talked about with the fingerprint of flood insurance. These are really the factors that drive a rate now with risk rating 2.0. As I mentioned before, it used to be you know flood zone X, AE, maybe an elevation certificate. With elevation now, uh, you've got distance to your lowest grade. So a crawl space is no longer considered the lowest grade with FEMA now. It's the next level up which is very great for the customer and using that lowest rated four. Uh, distance to water, this is a big struggle we're seeing right now. So if you have a dried up creek in your backyard, your rate very well could skyrocket because FEMA considers that to be a water source. There may not be any water on it for 20 years, but they're looking at distance to water. Flood frequency, you know, this is a big thing that's used now is you've got a lot of these areas that experience flash flooding a lot throughout the year. Let's just use Houston, Texas, for example. You know, not even looking at hurricanes. Houston has a big problem like New Orleans does. So they have a lot of excessive rainfall floods throughout the year. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee has had several the last few years. St. Louis. And so those things are driving the rate as well. Type of flooding. If you're in Wilmington and you have coastal flooding, or if you're in Winston-Salem and you have flash flooding, those are two, two different types of flooding sources that they're looking at and determining that rate. And then replacement costs. Really, this is can be something that's very dangerous on the commercial side. So on replacement costs, you know, you don't have to use it necessarily to set up a policy. FEMA's putting it in there, but replacement costs has a big impact on the rate. So let's just say that you have a $250,000 policy and a replacement on the home is 450 compared to a house with 250. Rate could be 40% higher, even though you're not taking out any more coverage. So you really wanna pay attention to this. And where we're seeing a big impact on replacement costs is actually on the commercial side. So a lot of times with FEMA now, write your own carriers. They don't have the data to do the replacement costs. So let's just say someone comes to you, you're writing a policy for half a million dollars, and you know, of course you do the coverage for 500K, but the replacement cost is really 2 million because they're gonna ask for a replacement cost estimator. That rate can skyrocket. We just actually had that happen this week with an agent that was setting up a policy for a business owner and they got this rate of a thousand dollars and they reached out to us and we were looking at it we said here's the problem here in three weeks when FEMA reaches out to you and says hey I need a replacement cost estimator the rates really gonna be twenty two hundred dollars which could create a really bad experience for the customer on the back end you know when they come to you say you know why is my rate going up twelve hundred dollars it's that replacement cost estimator so if you're doing the building on its own not flood just use that replacement cost estimator there's a company called massive cert that's m-a-s-s-i-v vecert.com. If you want to get one from them, I think they charge a couple bucks to do it. Uh, we use them a lot if we just need a replacement cost estimator on the commercial side. That's really something you want to pay attention to when you're writing these policies is that replacement cost can really come back and bite you if you're not careful.